pediatric sleep apnea is a condition that wasn't even recognized until the mid-70s. Since that time, we realized that lots of children end up having the same kind of symptoms that adults do. They may have snoring or pauses in breathing. More significantly, kids oftentimes have behavioral issues and so may not present in the exact same way that a man or a woman would present. If you have suspicion about obstructive sleep apnea, oftentimes you'll see either a sleep doctor or an otolaryngologist. If you're in our office, um, we typically end up looking at tonsils and adenoids as our first line to see if those may be enlarged and may be the reason for the sleep apnea. There are some times when a sleep study may be ordered in order to get further information about sleep apnea or snoring. Um, but if tonsillectomy and adenoidectomy don't work, there are also additional options that are also used in the adult world, like positive airway pressure or surgeries or dental appliances. Typical evaluation in the office is actually fairly easy. It's an examination of the throat, usually just done with a light in the office, pretty easy. Um, and adenoids can be assessed either with a scope or more commonly with an x-ray um, so that we can see if they're enlarged. For kids who snore and the tonsils are big, we oftentimes don't need to look at the adenoids um, because we know that we're gonna be looking at the same time as tonsil removal if that's the treatment that's been selected. For more information on this topic, please browse on ENTHealth.org and you can find a local ENT by clicking on Find an ENT.